Hi, I'm Natalie of SoHungryHippie.com. Today's Sunday Skill Builder is adjustable buckles and side release buckles. I just wanted a place for you to come so you can quickly view it and then move on with your bag making. So let's get started. All right, so this is what I mean when I'm talking about a side release buckle. That's how they look and then the strap is attached here, but there are a few things that you'll need to do. So I'm gonna do both of these. One is metal and one is plastic. So here's my bag. This is a Louis bag, by the way. We do have this pattern in the shop and we do have some kits as well. So this side, you'll just sew on like you normally do. In, her, in the Louis pattern, she calls for this extra D-ring just as kind of an added bonus, but you're just going to loop the webbing around this end of the buckle and sew it to your bag. All right, so this end of the buckle, like this one here, you're just going to bring that webbing around and sew it into your bag. Nothing special about that end. But on this end, because you want this strap to be adjustable, you, you need to use more than just this. So I'm going to use, I guess, this adjustable buckle. And I'm gonna take it through up and over that middle bar. And then I'll just slide it down and out of the way. And for this end, I'll slide it up and over that middle bar, just like the other buckle, okay? And then it doesn't really pull, so you'll have to kind of feed this up and bring this down. And then make some space in this bar. Bring it up and down over that bar again, that middle adjustable buckle bar. and then sew it to itself right here. So I'm gonna grab a clip so that that can be held, because I have to get my machine out. So let's do it again on the black bag, because that is this is what's gonna make your strap adjustable then, and the this will be sewn down, and then you'll just pull that guy into place and then it goes in. Okay, let's do it on this bag. So on this side, I've got this, oops, the buckle is together there. All right, there we go. Maybe I should move the cutting mat out of the way. Let me do that really quick. All right, so here's the buckle. I'm gonna take out that end. This is, I call this kind of the easier end. It's just the one that gets slid into. So I pulled that webbing around that little bar and sewed it to the bag. Now I've got this end to deal with. So I'm gonna bring this down here, go to the end of my strap. Sometimes you wanna wear these bags cross body. And so a long strap is perfectly fine. Okay, so my, Adjustable buckle is on, up and over that middle bar. And then this one, this looks a little bit different than the plastic one, so we're just gonna go around just like that. It's okay. I've gotta make some space here so that I can take this end and go up and over that bar again. And then I like to have a little bit more room. So then see that lower strap here? That is the portion that gets sewn. This end, this end that we just took around that middle bar gets sewn here. And then our bag, once this is sewn, This will click in there and it's completely adjustable. So if I wanted to make this 
really small strap, I can. And if I wanted to make it crossbody, I can. So I'll just show you like this style. I could have it like that. I could buckle it around my waist. That's kind of the point of a side release buckle is it just makes it easier to go around your waist if you want to waist carry it. And I can, I can make it smaller here. And you do want to measure your straps before you put them on your bag so you're not making them way too long. But the way I usually carry a bag, I like it crossbody. So you just move that buckle a little bit. And then depending where you like it, if you want it up higher, you just make your strap shorter. If you like it lower, then it would sit down there, okay? And again, this is the Louis pattern by uh -Oh Creations, and we have it in the shop, and we have kits in the shop if you want to make this bag. Now, I have an older video on how to just use an adjustable buckle, but let's go overhead again and review it with just the adjustable buckle, not a side release buckle this time. Okay, so I'm gonna use this one and a half inch hardware pack and the one and a half inch seat belt webbing here. So I know for me personally, I like a strap around 45 inches. So let me see here, I have to put on my glasses. Let's see, 12, 24, 36. Here we go, round here. So I'm going to snip my strap. Now if you're adding this to a bag that you've already made, it's no problem at all. This bag I'm gonna deconstruct. This is the coffee house bag and it, you can see that I've worn it out completely. This was not my cork. So the cork is just totally worn out. It went through the washing machine and just got beat up. So I'm going to redo it and save all this and just put in new cork so I can show you. See how I did it here? So if I didn't want to, let me just do this here. If I didn't want to unpick this seam, I could just cut out this D-ring attachment and stick that over it and rivet it perhaps, okay? But this is probably a cleaner look and a better option. Just unpick a little bit there on the side, stuff it in, and then I am going to use some clips and then I'll sew that, I mean, I want this right now on camera because I'm gonna redo this cork, but this is what I would do and I would sew over it there, and then I might either do an X for extra security, or I might stick maybe one or two rivets in. It's really personal preference, but this way you can have your lobster hook on the strap, and this here, you see? And now we will feed this through the adjustable bar up and over the middle bar, oops, like this, and then through this side, and you'll bring it back over to the middle, make a little room there, see how I do that? Otherwise it's just impossible to get it through. Up and over that middle bar again, And then this is the part you'll sew. This goes over here. Put clips in it for now so you don't forget where to sew. And then you can pull it taut. And then this side is going to attach over here. I'm gonna take out this old one.
There it goes. I need this to be big enough for my one and a half inches. So I'm just going to open it a little more. And then I need another two inches. So I can put in my D ring here. Sew across this so it behaves for you. Just, just real quick, sew across there before you stick it in here. And I don't like mine sticking way up like this. I put it down in there so that I can for sure do a rivet or an X for extra security. Oh, I need my jumbo clips. May want to use pins too. I usually have some pins that have been bent and all that because of all the layers and things. So I'll sew that in, attach my strap, and now because this will be sewn down, now this strap is adjustable. Really short, or I can make it really long. So let me show you that here. This is the preferred method where you stick in the D-ring attachments into the gusset or the side seam, or you can put it on top. It doesn't have to be inside if, if you're okay with that. If you were gonna have any fray or any uh, raw edges of the seatbelt webbing on the outside of the bag, I would treat it with fray check and then put your swivel hooks or your lobster clasps on the strap ends and then just feed your adjustable buckle as I showed you. And it just makes it really simple to adjust your strap. I just love it when a bag comes with an adjustable buckle. It kind of depends if I'm wearing a heavy winter coat or not, how long my strap has to be. It's just nice to have that option. Now, if you were wondering if I've ever put adjustable straps on the Santorini, yes, I have. I don't have my sample here, of course, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. Okay, so now we're gonna add a crossbody strap or an adjustable strap to this Santorini tote. This is made with marble vinyl, and it is a sample in my shop. That's what that sticker is. And right now, I just have the shoulder straps here. So I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna use one inch seat belt webbing and one inch gold hardware. Okay, so I'm gonna measure my strap again. Let's do it about 48 inches long for the main strap. And then two pieces, I'm gonna make these, I'm gonna make these three inches long, just so I have plenty of room for that D-ring. And this is exactly what I do so that everything's the same without having to go crazy measuring with my eyes. All right, so let's do our D-rings first. I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna sew them. Now I am just using white thread. You would wanna change to a matching thread. I go back and forth a few times. This is just, for me, this is just what I do. You can go once, it's gonna get sewn again. I just know how I am. So I'm threading it through the D-ring again, bringing it down, edges match and meet, and I'm gonna put it through here. Now I sew it where my foot is hitting that D-ring so that it's, the same, it's sewn in the same spot on both D-ring attachment pieces. Now, if you only have white thread, you can this you can stick it down far enough for this to be hidden, or you can sharpie it. It's fine. It, it'll work. 
Okay, so now I've got this finished Santorini bag and I need to have a little opening and I have to put on my glasses for this part. I am just gonna open this barely, this side edge. I go a little bit down from the top. I start about an inch down. I don't start right up there at the zipper tabs. And I make a little opening. See that, it's just one inch, about one inch big. And I stick in that D-ring. Now, I did not cut the inside. I did not cut the inside. So now I'm gonna very discreetly, with black thread is what I should use, but I'm not going to, because this is a tutorial. I'm gonna sew right across there and secure that inside. Wish me luck. <laughs> now it does change that side of the bag a smidge, but that's okay. I'm gonna be the only one that notices this because I thought of this after the fact, it's okay. If I was just building this bag, I would have attached these the proper way to only the exterior panel and then put the whole bag together. But sometimes we don't think of things until we've already been using it and wishing we had done something different, right? Now, the thing is, is you want to make sure you're catching that back side as well. It looks like I just kind of hit a little bit of it. So I'm going to go over it from the other side. Again, it doesn't hurt. You don't want to go over this 50,000 times because you definitely don't want to perforate your vinyl. But a few times back and forth is okay. So now I'm gonna take it to the overhead camera. You can see this. It looks messy right now. I have to trim my threads. These are not my sewing scissors. And see, even with the white thread, it's not bad. I wouldn't be mad at that. Not at all. But I could also just take a Sharpie and cover it up. Okay, let's do this side. Again, this method is for if you forgot to attach your D-rings as you're building the bag. If you're still building your Santorini tote, let's pretend this is just an outside panel here. This is just an outside panel. You would attach your D-ring the standard way where it's facing inward so that then when you turn your bag right side out, it's, it's facing outward. I hope I didn't lose you there. This is in case you've already built your Santorini tote and you wanna add a crossbody strap after the fact. There's so many things you can do with a Santorini. That's why I keep showing you all these different add-ons and tips because the sky's the limit. Actually, it isn't a limit. Um, you can just do so much. All right, let's repeat on this side. Need my glasses. I'm gonna move a little bit, the same amount down as I did on the other side. Unpick some of these outer stitches only. I'm not pushing the scalpel in through the lining, I'm not. I'm gonna insert that D-ring. I'm gonna look at it, make sure it's Pretty much even with the other side, looks like it is. And now I'm gonna take it to the machine and sew that down. Now, if you need to do clips or tape or glue or something to hold it for you while you're getting to this point, that's okay, you do you. I find that as long as I'm sewing it right away, just holding it in place is fine. Let me check the back. Ugh, I missed it just a smidge. I wonder why I'm doing that. That's okay, I'll just hit it from the back as well. Thank you.
All right, let's take this to the overhead camera. Make sure it's in there. I always give it a, a tug and a pull. Yep, it's in there. Trim threads, Sharpie color the thread if you didn't use a matching thread. And we're almost good to go. Let's do our strap now. Let's make it adjustable so that this is our best bag. Okay, remember we cut this strap piece. I'm gonna move this out of the way for a moment. We're gonna focus on the strap after I trim these threads, that's bugging me. Okay, these are our remaining pieces. So we know one end just gets the lobster or swivel hook treatment and that's it. So I'm gonna put a clip, we'll sew everything at one time. That end is done. Now we're gonna move over. We're gonna put the strap up and over that middle bar. <laughs> I got butter fingers. And I'll pull it down. I'll pull it down so you can see it with this one, okay? Now making, making sure the strap is not twisted, I'm gonna bring it back and through this swivel hook or lobster and pull this end down. I'm gonna smush this up so that this end can come up over that middle bar and back down and get sewn to itself right here. Move that guy out of the way. You're sewing this piece only, this to this. Let's go over it again. Ramel wasn't paying attention, so we're gonna review it again. <laughs> Ramel, you're now gonna be making all my straps, okay? So pay attention like your life depends on it. So this end was put through the swivel clasp. We have this flat. We're going up and over the bar. We're taking this through the swivel hook and back down. We have to make some room here, so I kind of push it up. I bring this up, <laughs> up, and over that center bar. And then it gets sewn to itself right here only. Can you wiggle that piece that you went over the center bar? Wiggle it a little bit. This is the piece that just went over the center bar, this piece. Yeah, wiggle it inside. This gets sewn to this only. Let me put a clip here. So the mistake people will commonly make is sewing all of this together and then your, your sliding buckle doesn't move. So the key is this piece is free. This piece that just went up and over the bar, that is only sewn right here to itself. Right here. Can you uh, punch it? So you mean like this? Yeah. Then, so take this through to, again? No, 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 don't take it through. Well, take it through now, but I just want you to, to wiggle it inside. Up, yep, up. And over that center bar. Yeah. And now right here. Grab it with your finger and now wiggle it up and inside of there. Oh, like here? Yeah. yeah just yep. Like that, so we can see it. That's the only part that gets sewn. Yeah, so there's two pieces that go over that center bar. And this is the part where people mess up. They bring this down and they want to sew all of this together. And you can't do that. It only gets sewn to this bottom section here. That's it. And you don't, you don't need to have this much sewn to it, you see? That's gonna shorten your strap forever. So you only want like, you know, two or three inches sewn. So let me take this to the machine and I'll sew it. And you'll see the strap all together. 
And again, use your matching threads. Take the time. You'll like the result better. You can do an X. You can get all fancy if you want. I don't really care about that. Trim my threads. Now that, that edge there, that edge, you can turn that under again if you want to. What I usually do is just dab some fray check on there or fray block. And I think I've got an open tube here. Yes, I do. So I'm going to do that now because this strap is going to be used on this tote. That'll prevent it from fraying. So, huh? You sell that yes, I do. I sell fray block. And I might get fray check in too. It, two different products, brands, both do the same thing. You could even treat the edges of your D ring before you put it in if you want to. I've never, I've never treated them and I've been fine, but you know, it depends on the quality of webbing that you're using, honestly. Some webbing is just notoriously terrible and others not, so. There you go. Okay, so now I'm going to trim these threads and our strap is functional. And I would totally um, test this before taking it out into the wild as well. Because if it's too long or too short, you wanna just redo it right now while you're at the machine. There we go. It's nice to have options. What? Those straps. You want me to tuck these in? Yep. I mean, I can, but then I can't zipper it shut. Yeah, no. Usually they're a little shorter than that. I made those a little longer than normal. But so now this Santorini tote can truly be crossbody. And this is often how I will travel is I like to have my hands free for airline tickets or a coffee or whatever I need to do and have my bag like this on me. I never take it off. <laughs> so you can see this strap very easily, shorter or longer. Maybe I want to carry it like this with just a one, one shoulder strap instead of the two. And these, I just leave these on the outside normally. And I have my zipper shut and I've never had an issue with anything being annoying or getting in the way. It's fine. Okay. So that is one way you can add a crossbody strap to <laughs> crossbody strap to a Santorini tote after you've already built it. Now remember, if you're in the midst of making a Santorini, just add your D-rings in when you're putting the whole bag together onto your exterior panels only. And you can angle them, you can do whatever you want. You can rivet them on last thing, you can put, you could put them vertically. I've seen plenty of um, Santorinis in the wild where people put the D-rings in vertically, one on the front, one on the back, and then the strap is like this. It's personal preference. There is no correct way. Always are correct if it works for you. So feel free to experiment and explore with that and show us what you make in the group. We'd love to see it. Can you think of any questions, Ramel, since I have you here today? He's here. Uh, nope. I no kind of like this, this jobby for the coffee house bag. I think next, maybe you can film it while I take this cork out and replace it. That'd be a good one, right? I'm sure you guys want to know how to, how to update your bags if something wears out. All right, well, thank you for being here. I will see you, I think, Tuesday night for the So Yeah show, perhaps. If not, I'll see you Wednesday at Matchups. Peace, love, sewing.